Over the Line Extra, your weekly Galway GAA podcast with Ollie Turner and Sean Walsh in association with Seymour's Lock Ray. Hello everybody, welcome on into Over the Line Extra in association with Seymour's of Lock Ray where this week we're focusing in on club football. We've got the four intermediate quarterfinals and the last round of group games in the senior championship. But first, before we go talking big ball, let me bring in my colleague Sean Welsh. Sean, a an amazing weekend of hurling championship action. I'm sure they're smiling out in Turlock Moor after their big win over St. Thomas's, but how significant was it is the big question. Look, I suppose at the end of the day, it was uh, any time you win, you'll take it. Uh, the ironic thing, though, is the way that that group is now set up. Uh, Turlock Moor, despite beating Thomas's and ending this 22 match unbeaten run, may not even get through to the quarterfinals. Because they play Sarsfields in the last game. The top four in the group are playing each other in the last round, Alex. So they play Sarsfields, who are in great form. Sarsfields could beat Turlock, put them into the preliminary quarterfinals. Uh, Thomas's, there will be a reaction, there's no doubt. Um, they could come back and beat Clarence Bridge in the last game and get to the quarterfinals. So, look, at what we were seeing is a very good championship. I think that um, there was a fear early on. You kind of knew the three teams in Group 1 and indeed Group 2 of Senior A pretty early. Yeah. Uh, but now in in both groups, other than Lock Ray, who are straight through to the quarterfinals and in fairness are very impressive from what we're seeing thus far, um, the other teams all have something to play for in the last game, be it trying to get into the, pr- the pr- preliminary quarterfinals or the quarterfinals straight. Some extraordinary matches, but for me the mm. two that stood out were Moy Cullen's amazing yeah. win over Kennedy Militrum uh, in the Pierce Stadium, one of the games of the year, but probably surpassed by Cylon and Kinvara in yeah. the intermediate. That extraordinary match. So you talk about Cylon and Moy Cullen and the great stories that they've created. We're looking for stories in the football championship as well. And I suppose if we look at Group 1, Sean, I mean, Moy Cullen's victory over Curra Finn has given them now mm. control of Group 1 on eight points. Um, but Curra Finn played Tune Stars. Now, there's no real threat to Curra Finn because they have a massive score difference there. But if Curra Finn were to give a good beating to Tume Stars. Yeah. And at the moment, like Tume are on, we'll say, plus eight. Mm-hmm. But if they were to lose by seven or eight points, mm-hmm. they could be in real, real trouble with what might happen in groups two and three. So the onus really is on Tume Stars to be very, very competitive on Sunday evening. Well, we're going to use this phrase a lot now, aren't we, over the next few days, the, the, the best play second team and the best play third team. And this is where it can all go a little bit awry. As you say, one result here of a freakish nature whereby you lose by, say, 10 points you know, if you're going down the home straight and you're only three points down and suddenly you're hit with a few extra late points later on, these are going to come into play because in Group 3, which is an intriguing group, you could have any sort of permutation coming there and you could have one of those teams are in, in Group B, not so much because Montpellier, Mylock and Salt Hill are in the pole position here. But h- how much you win by and how much you lose by could be influenced by this. So I think, look, at, as you say, Mike Cullen have been very impressive, but Cora Finn and Tume Stars, I would imagine, if they met at under 12, will be a game of its own anyway. I mean, the rivalry that's there. Two were disappointing last time out, weren't they? And you would imagine that Kevin Reedy has a dressing room full of guys that are mad to get it going again. And this is now knockout, effectively. This round five of no more than the hurling and now the football, this is where you set your year. And you go out of the championship now if you don't. You see, the oh. thing about these two games as well is that you've got Salt Hill and Uncavarua playing at... Yes the same time mm. as Curra Finn and Tume Stars because both those games are linked yes. and that's from uh, groups two and group one together. So Salt Hill at the moment are on six points with a score difference of plus 21. Curra Finn on six points, a score difference of plus 34. Yeah. And this is, as you alluded to, Sean, to be the best second place yes. team to go in with the three winners into one pot and avoid having to play the Moylock, Mont yeah. Moylocks or the Moy Cullens. So Curra Finn, you bet your bottom dollar, will be out to win Absolutely. that game. If they do, yeah. then unless Salt Hill win by 30 points, it's hard to see how, how that can happen. So Curra Finn have a lot to play for in this game, as have Tume Stars, because if they lose, they'll be looking over their head at the likes of Anna Down, yes. who could get to six points in Group 2. And also, obviously, in Group 3, there's any number of teams that could get to six points and yeah. potentially knock them out. So... There is going to be a lot the, of permutations. Yeah, yeah, and not alone the six points, but the criteria for the best place is right, the same as always, the number of points. But then you're down to scoring score difference. difference and scores far. So that's where this thing could open up entirely, yeah. where if you get one unusual result, it could skew a team's performance. And this is, look, it's, it's great in a way because it makes the last round. Like, as of now, Mike Cullen 
on value my lock and salt in Macnacara, we know are definitely there, right? For the rest, it's moving time. It is. Let's bring in our own Tommy Devan, who's going to be out and about doing some live stream commentary on these games at the weekend as well. Tommy, I'm looking at the fixtures. Uh, you're going to be in Pierce Stadium uh, for that intermediate quarter final. We'll talk of in a minute between Michal Brannock and Ilan Oren. Uh, of course, the second game there is Kellan and Carla Strand. So if we look at the Group 3 table, Tommy, because this is the first game you'll be at senior level on Saturday, there are so many permutations here as to what can happen. Obviously, for Kellan, they have no chance of qualifying, but they'll be anxious to try and jump out of the relegation. But Carla Strand could conceivably get to six points, try and get to somewhere around... Uh, a, a zero or maybe even a, a plus score difference and it might be enough depending on what happens with Corafin and Chum and with the, the other group involving Anna Down as well in Group 2. Yeah, I think Group C is, has turned out to be a, a classic group in the sense that you got the two teams at the top, Claire Galway and Milltown playing each other at the weekend but down at the bottom that Carister and Kalani game you alluded to Ali, that's a huge game as well and not to mention one of Abbey and St Michael's uh, as well in that one so I suppose one of the Abbey had a good victory turned over Milltown the last time, but they were disappointing up to that in the sense that they lost out narrowly in their opening three games. Kalanen had beaten one of the Abbey, Carla Strand had beaten one of the Abbey, and now one of the Abbey plays St. Michael's, who are in third place at the moment, but looking to get to seven points in that group. So, you know, you talk about, Sean talked about permutations and stuff that can go wrong or for a club very easily over the next uh, hour of football uh, at the weekend but this is this is the weekend I think that you know the supporters in particular are really looking forward to it. this is as near to the knockout as we're going to get before the quarterfinals and the relegation semi-finals and playoffs so even looking at that group Polly it's 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 exciting um, from a GEA supporter just to look at it and see you know that the groups have ended up this way in particular group C Yeah you talk about that third group then yeah. I mean Munavi Abbey have lost three games out of their four and yet they have a positive score difference of plus one, which yeah. is, is, is yeah. quite ridiculous, yeah. really, when you think about it. I mean, there's other groups where you'd have lost three games and you might be minus 20. So, I mean, your own club, that win over Milltown, must, I mean, you'd have been back home that, that night after being out and about at matches. That must have been a huge boost to the parish and to the club, giving them real belief that they could get another win and avoid the relegation battle. Yeah, it was. And it was the thoughts as well, uh, right after the game from the manager, Garvin McDade. You know, he knew there was something more in this team than what they had results had given them in the opening three games. They were real underdogs against Milltown, and rightly so. Milltown were up there at the top and they were flying it. Uh, but I think the changing of the game, lads, was the positioning very quietly and astutely by the Monavie Abbey management team to put Killian McDade in at full forward maybe five minutes into the second half. And the minute he went in there, he just caused consternation in there. He got two goals and set up another goal. And really, Milton were rocked, lads, and there was no way back for them. Time went against them and a few different things didn't go their way. And I know they're missing a couple of key players as well, which they're going to be missing for a while now as well. But yeah, one of the Abbey are in a good place after that game, but it's how they react to that victory now and how they react to taking on St. Michael's because I think that that, there's a very tough group in its own way. There was not too much between Claire Gaw and Milton Michaels, Carlos Strand, Monavé and Kellan. And so, look, still a lot to play for. Monavé, everyone will be happy, but they do not want to be involved in the relegation like any other club. Ali. I'm just so excited, Sean, because we haven't got these too many opportunities whereby you've got three games yes. over and back and yeah. they're all of equal consequence. And literally, as you said, a point in any one of those three venues. So just to recap, five o'clock Saturday, yeah. the three matches in that group three will all throw in together. In Athen Rye, it's Milltown Clare Galway. In Tume Stadium, it's St. Michael's Monavie Abbey. And in Pierce Stadium, it's Kalan and Carla Strand. By the way, this man here, Sean Madge, might have a bit of news about one particular Clare Galway footballer who has a dog running in the Irish Greyhound <laughs> Derby final on Saturday night. I mean, is he possibly going to think about playing the match and then hightailing it to Dublin or, or what are you hearing? Well I'd say seeing that he's training Greyhounds he probably has the, the route already <laughs> planned yeah I think the Greyhound Derby is late enough is it? Is it be just after 9 o'clock yeah, I think from what I yeah, gather yeah. Uh, 5 o'clock you're in Athen Rye you're on the motorway it's doable it's doable but look at what's intriguing that's Peter Dibley we're Peter Dibley about, uh, was... what a story this will ah, be yeah, yeah, yeah. it kind of got me thinking of Kieran Malloy and the mad dash yeah, he made so a couple of years ago Singerson, going, going, yeah. for, for the Sigerson final yeah. from Curra Finn. 
but this is a different ball game. So if he's playing against Milltown, and surely he will, because yeah. it's such a big game for Clare Galway. So he's he thinking, actually made the team of the week twice, twice didn't he? so yes, far in yes, the championship. Yes. He's having a great season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so here he is uh, with a dog. Yes. In trap two in the in Greyhound this... Derby final, in a very winnable race yeah. with 125 grand up for first prize. Now forgive me. But if Clare Galway are winning by five or six points with 10 minutes to go, I'm sure he'd be uh, inclined to say to the manager, the hamstring is feeling yeah, a bit yeah, tight, yeah, I need yeah, to go. Yeah, you need to mind me. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, look, it's a lovely story. And in fairness, look, we wish them all the best luck in the in the, in, in the doggy part. But there's an intriguing part here as well. I mean, your own club, Midtown, started like a bolt out of the blue. Now there's a draw, there's a defeat. And... You have Clare Gawler playing Milltown as the one two, the top two playing each other, right? But if Milltown say overturn Clare Galway and Michaels get a result, aren't you changing the whole um complexion of that group as well? Now the other thing here is there all those games are on Saturday at five o'clock, as you say. By which time say Anna Down and Berna, for instance, will have an idea of who's where in that group, for Yeah, they'll, they'll know what they need they, to do they, on they Sunday. Need to do. So there's, a, there's permutations all over the place yeah. here. But as you rightly say, there's a lot of pressure on Clare Galway in the context that, you know, they should yeah, be winning yeah, that group yeah. now in this context. Well, they're, they're top of it now and look at they've got to say, the move probably after the first game was Conor Flaherty to pull forward seemed to change their whole attack and philosophy. Yeah, they now have Danny Cummins back as well, which is a huge bonus to them. Now they're, they're, they're picking up injuries as well as is everyone. Milltown, I mean, Michael Merton and these guys are shooting the lights out, started very well. Can they get back on the horse here? Because the prize, as we keep saying, for the quarterfinals, for just to explain to people, is that there's one pot with four that are seated and there's one pot with four that aren't seated. So, you know, the four stronger teams, if you can join them, uh, it's a better prospect of getting through. So there's an easier path. Yeah, yeah. and we've been saying about Group C all along that they didn't have the marquee team in with them. So there's there's a chance here for all of these teams and I think we're going to see that at the weekend. Let's switch back to Group 1, uh, Tommy. Mm. We're going to finish off with a look at the other matches. We talked about Corrafin, Tume Stars and we explained the permutations there. But uh, obviously there's two other games to keep an eye on there as well uh, and that includes Uchtarard against Unspidale at 3 o'clock on Sunday in Pierce Stadium. And... You know, for both of those sides, they're the bottom two. Only one point for Uchtarard, none for Unspidale. And then you've got Mike Cullen taking on Nevan Letcher Moore. Uh, that's also on Sunday at three o'clock. That is out in Ross Muck. So, I mean, you'd have to expect a Mike Cullen victory there, Tommy. Uh, for Unspidale, though, you know, here's an opportunity for them to get off the bottom with the win over Uchtarard. But how big an ask is that? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, that clash at the bottom is is a tough one. It's a tough one for both sides, but on Spidgel, you know, they've been struggling and they're a dual club as well. We've seen them save their intermediate status last weekend. But that's a, that's a tough ask, I think, for on Spidgel at the weekend. You wouldn't see too much changing at the top of that group because it is what it is at the moment. But I'm sure Mike Cullen, Corrafin and Tume, all of them want to win their remaining games. Uh, Mike Cullen in particular, look, they have six score difference of plus 20. Corrafin there with score difference of plus 34. So, again, they're... It's a group that has probably sealed itself off from the last round. But yeah, there's interesting games to look forward to there as well at the weekend. And uh, that uh, Real Talk clash, I think, is the one at the end of Gerard and on Speed Jail. That's going to be very interesting for bragging rights alone, I think, lads. The intermediate quarterfinals, which in truth are four big games because mm. they're a knockout. Yeah. But in Group 2, uh, Mabella and Malak really have been so impressive here. I mean, plus thirty-eight, Sean. Four yeah. wins out of four. There's yeah. a, there's a real sense that Mobile and Locker are on a mission this yeah. year, and might be thinking even beyond Galway if that's possible. While Corrafin are still in the championship, but they look so good. Daily, from what Barry was telling us a few weeks ago, is beginning to come back as well. So, uh, Salt Hill and Cara will be happy enough, I'd say, with where they're at as well. You know, they had the litmus test game against Mobile and Mylock. The flip side of this then is Anna Down, who lost the first two games to the big two, as we call it, now have a shootout with Berna. And if they can do enough there, they could get themselves into the into the playoff picture here. And the other thing, I suppose, we're just mentioning, like, and each one of these groups, the bottom two places suck you into the relegation playoffs. And the relegation playoffs are, they're, uh, the, 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 it's a com- not complicated, but you're caught in there. And that's the last place a club wants to be yeah. at the end of the championship. And, you know, 
we'll all look at various teams and say, you know, you're too good to go down, but you can get sucked into this as well. So Very that's easily, why yeah. on this weekend, as I think we're going to see teams wanting to put their best foot forward for a lot of reasons. Well, by the way, Lock St. James's, that's on Saturday at 3.15 in Athenry. And the way this championship is going, it would be impossible, I think, to predict anything other than a Mount Bellew mm-hmm. victory there. So until I mentioned they're playing Carrow on Sunday evening at 4.45 in Inverne. And then the shootout is Anna down Berna. Now, Berna mm-hmm. can't qualify for the knockout mm-hmm. stages uh, because the likelihood is two teams in groups uh, one and three will get to six points. They're on three, can only get to five. But for Anna down, uh, the key here, Tommy, is they will have a chance to resurrect something, albeit the chances are they're going to have to beat Berna by probably at least six points to get themselves to a zero score difference or even into plus one. Uh, and that's not going to be simple given Berna's topsy-turvy nature, including that big win over St. James's. Yeah, not easy. But aren't they fortunate that they're in this situation considering the bad start they had to the championship? Um, you know, we've seen them the last day with uh, Frankie Burke scoring 1-7 in Pier Stadium and I think they need a bit more of that from the other forwards as well they enjoyed a lot of possession in that game but they you know they just took them for ages to uh, put the game to bed but yeah it's interesting because um, if any don't get two points as you said they're on six as well and considering the positions in the other groups as well Anton is, is possible but it's Barna as you say can't probably get there now but they'll feel safe to be there uh, still in the senior championship for next year. So James and Carroll at the bottom, uh, that's going to be interesting as well because it's hard to see how James is, will overturn the county champions. But you never know. This is the last round of the group games and this is where this is where we may see some surprises at the weekend, lads. And an and, and old man actually said that to me at the weekend that it may not be the first two games that caught on it down. The losses against the big two, as we say, Montpellier and Salt Hill. But it could be not beaten Carrow by more than what they did, you know. So, yeah, we've seen that plenty of times, yeah, haven't we, yeah. in the past at intercounty level, even. Mm. Um, let's move to the intermediate quarterfinals, lads. And there's so much at stake here because so many teams have been knocking at the door in recent years to try and get up. And I suppose you look at Demore McHale's against Kilcurrent Lamburn, that's the first fixture uh, that we'll be looking at. Uh, St. Brendan's, Currafin, Ilon Orr, and Michal Brannock's three of the four quarterfinals are on Saturday but the big one the clash and they all seem to be <laughs> yeah. however these draws are managed it's brilliant that you get three derby matches pretty much but the more Kilcairn Clamburn Tommy has all sorts of connotations as regards a, a derby mm-hmm. match I mean literally two parishes right on each other's doorsteps all of the hullabaloo about Shane Walsh seems to have died down a little bit now but if anything will this have galvanised mm-hmm. this Kilcairn Clamburn panel for a tilt at Dunmore yeah, I think there's a, a lot of truth in that, Ali. Um, i seen Kilcair and Clamburn against Ilad Iron the last day. They were well beaten in the finish, but they did put in a good performance. Now, if Shane Walsh had gone at this stage of the championship, you'd be saying, you know, that's an awful blow to Kilcair and Clamburn. But they've known it now for a number of weeks, and he's piling away up in Kilmacud, doing his bit up there. So I think, you know, they're resolute, they're strong, they're very passionate in Kilcair and Clamburn. And especially when you put them out against the green jersey from down the road and the Demore McHale's jersey, they become even more passionate and more determined to get a result. And, you know, the quarterfinals now take on the life of their own, as we, as we know, even in the hurling. Like, it doesn't matter what's gone on before this. This is 60 minutes. This is about how much you want to win it, how much you want to wear that jersey for the club and how much you want to turn over the opposition. And I tell you, this game, Demore McHale's and Kilcarran Clamburn really want to look forward to at the weekend. That's what I'm going to be at for sure. Albeit, Sean, you'd still have to say, like, if the first half done more performance against Kilconnelly turns up, they're good enough to beat anybody. And I mean, that was probably the best half that anybody played in the Intermediate Championship this year. But the second half was probably yeah. the worst. Talk so, about Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, so where, do, where does it really lie? But uh, if you're into Indian signs, Dunmore have an unbelievable record over Kilcarran Clamburn over the years. That's the only other thing. So... Whether that there means might anything. be many Indians around for the weekend, though. Yeah, but anyway, it could be. Uh, <laughs> it could be it could, but that is a factor. I mean, teams do have the the they are able to beat certain teams. But if you look at, I mean, St Brendan's semis last year, Dunmore. There's a little shade of climber in Dunmore, like beaten last year in the final of their respective intermediate championships, and coming back with a bit of gusto. As you say, Kilcarran Clanburn have been knocking around this as well. I mean. I remember Shane Welch, I think, had a chance, was it against Clare Galway? 
uh, during long range free. So they have a lot of experience as well. Ilan Arn is at their is at their third semi in five years as well. So these teams that are knocking around here know what it's about. But Tommy is dead right. This is now knockout, right? Last Sunday coming into an intermediate match, we'd say Air Court were probably second favourites to Kilimer. And they got into a right battle with Abbey. Yeah, and that's so, to dig it out at the end, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, dig it out at the end. So here you're you're now looking at you can imagine Kilcarran Clamber and there has to be let's go out and show here. A kick in this, yeah. 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 Um Brendan's would probably fancy the Corafin game because Corafin are the only second team that have got through, right? Probably have lost a few as it's gone on. As well, so there's those permutations, and then Glenn and Kilcandy is a huge game of his own. on Sunday, and we'll talk about Ilan Oran and Michal Bannocks yeah. in a moment. But Tommy, like St. Brendan's, this is a big opportunity for them, and I don't know were too many talking about St. Brendan's as being in their top three if they were thinking about potential intermediate winners at the start of the championship. I have a fair feeling a few people are talking about it now. Yeah, absolutely. They would have been further down the rankings than that, Ali, for sure, at the start of the year. But you know, they've gone through a couple of lean years where you know they were restructuring, regrouping. Not a lot of stuff happened for them over the last number of years. And they've come a little bit in under the radar, but not by their performances by any manner of means. You know, they've they've played good teams. They've dished out uh, defeats to a lot of teams that might have considered themselves in the running for the championship this year. So, yeah, and they're playing Corfin. And Sean is right. It's Corfin's second team. They've quit themselves very well in the championship at intermediate level this year. But you just have to say that St. Brendan's no more than John Moore McHale's and, and Kilcar and Clamber and clubs like that. Very passionate about their football. They look at their leaders from over the years and people that did well for them at county level and everything. And they follow big and they have big support. And you'd have to say in Dublin Park the next day that St. Brendan's probably, no, we never know, should have too much for Corrafin. But again, that's one that's uh, wetting the appetite as well for the weekend. But like St. Brendan's, I think, will fancy themselves to get to a semi final. Corrafin might have other ideas, lads. Something has to give as well in that Michal Brannock Ilan Oran game because yeah. these are two sides that have been knocking in and around the, the door of the championship. Michal Brannock's going up and coming down again. Um, lost two of the best intermediate finals we've seen in years, including that one on penalties to Uchterard in the replay a couple of years ago and before that, uh, of course, on Spidale as well. So Michal Brannock's know what it's like to win at this stage of the championship. But are you getting the feeling that Ilan Oran at some point are going to make the breakthrough as well and could this be their year? Yeah, exactly. I, I thought it would be even previous to this that they would have gone on and, uh, and gone further in championship but looking at them this year they, they seem to have improved. I don't know if they've got extra players in from somewhere from another island or whatever but they are just seem to be a little bit more polished and a little bit more ready I think Stephen Joyce on the sideline the last day and uh, making a couple of changes bringing in a couple of lads that I mightn't have seen before or whatever um, too much but you still got the likes of Tyler Flaherty there, Colm O'Brien on, and you know, there's so many good players there uh, on that Ilan Iron team that their day will come. Not quite sure if it's going to be this year, but this is a huge test now for both teams, Ilan Iron and Michal Brannocks. Michal Brannocks probably fancy themselves to go most of the way this year in the championship as well. They have had some good victories during the year, but I suppose if this is the opening clash of the intermediate championship quarterfinals at at the weekend or one of them anyway it's a huge one to look forward to in Pier Stadium and I, no doubt there'll be a big crowd there as well from both the islands and indeed from out around Michal Brannocks as well so look great game great won't game. be much in it and I suppose we could have the extra time job coming in there as well lads and of course the injuries like you know Sean Mulcairns for instance like you know a player like that if he's out which is a huge loss like you're also as we kept talking about in the in the Intermediate Championship you've played three games over six weeks, and now we're straight into the knockout. So, you know, if you have a guy that the hamstring is tight or whatever, this is where it's going to be showing up now in, in from quarterfinals on. So <laughs> injuries and having a clean bill of health is huge coming into these games. I suppose the thing about Brannox is, you know, they started like a house on fire yeah. with that big win over Ornmore Mary 18-11, but then a setback losing to St. Brendan's in Duggan Park and clawing out a draw against Caltra the they've, last day. They've so limped here really haven't they? They've just yeah. about fallen into yeah. the quarterfinals yeah, yeah. out of that group that could have just as easily gone the other way to Caltra so for me Elon Oren are probably marginal favourites in that one but, but then But the catalyst could be as well then that that, that last minute equaliser could open it up for Rannis And you're right about Sean Mulkern I mean he's yeah. not far away from yeah. a return having suffered that injury in the Sigerson right at the start of the year and what a boost he'd yeah. be if he yeah. was fit to be able to come in um, we got to talk about the last match, lads, of the weekend. 
And in fairness, you talk about Dunmore and Kilcurran Clamburn being a, a big derby, but this is another classic encounter, Kilconley and Glenna Maddy. And classic in the sense that both sides have been going really well, Tommy, in the championship this year. Uh, Darren Malahi down training Glenna Maddy, they look like a real force now to be reckoned with. Uh, and of course, Kilconley as well, with Paul Mannion and the quality that they have to show as well uh, throughout their championship up front, scoring for fun as well. I'm not so sure this one is as easy to predict and, and if any of the games yeah. would need extra time and maybe go all the way to Penos, this could be the one. Yeah, that that's just one of the other games that I had ticked off here that you know could go all the way uh, in that contest. Kilconley have been around maybe a bit newer in the championship over the last number of years than Glenn and Maddie. Glenn and Maddie would have gone through a spell where they were maybe struggling a little bit, struggling for numbers. But as you rightly said, Ali, they're rightly there now and they're they really fancied themselves this year having a right cut at it. They were in junior not so long ago, a few years ago. And now they're at intermediate in the quarterfinals, taking on Kilconley, who themselves, I suppose, you know, would feel maybe that they didn't do as good as they should have over the last number of years. But um, yeah, there are two teams in form. Uh, I wouldn't try and separate the two of them the next day because you probably take maybe a goal or two from either side if that's to separate them because on their point score, and I'd say, you know, both of them are equally adept at uh, getting fine scoring averages in games, and it could be a high-scoring game and that one the next day, but uh, I wouldn't like to pick that one in fairness to both teams. I, For a start, I cannot see it being a high-scoring game at all, Tommy. I have to disagree. <laughs> I'm looking at Glenna Maddy's defence. It's the best in County mm. Galway at any level. They've played three matches, Sean. They've conceded 19 points, no goals. I mean... Yeah. That's like six points a game they're conceding. And I mean, I know Malai is a defender or whatever, yeah, but Jizzy's yeah, teaching them how to get behind the ball. And, and they are scoring at the other end. And you're now going into a knockout game. Yeah. Where you have to stay alive. So that's hardly going to change. Oh, Tommy, this could be, I think yeah. this could be 9-8, eight, 8-7, eight, mm. something like that. But isn't it so exciting though? Let's just yeah. look at it in totality. Like these club players yeah. getting a chance to shine on a stage where there's no issues with county players not being yeah. able to play or being told not to play or having yeah. knocks because there's an All-Ireland coming up or whatever. They just have a clear run at it. it. I mean, we think back to our time playing football. Wouldn't you have loved this sort of opportunity? It would, of course. And I think there's, you know, for all teams involved, like, you don't need much to get you up for the next weekend now. You know, there were some of the league games there or some of the group games in the championship where people would have said, you know, we lose this one, what harm? We have another three to go, another four to go. And uh, likewise, it happened in the second round. There's no out now, lads. It's as simple as this. You've got to turn up for your club the next day. You've got to be proud of the jersey that you're wearing. If you want to get to that next stage for intermediate semi-final and for the senior, it's to get out into the quarterfinals. But, you know, if you have that ability to build yourself up, to give that extra 20 or 30% next weekend for your club, then go out and do it because this is where it starts. This is the, the business end of the championship. and This is where every club player wants to be. And you're right, Ali, this is where we would have loved to be ourselves a number of years ago. we in the quarterfinal of the intermediate championship where you're getting through from the last group game to the quarterfinals of the senior championship. You do everything that you can to prepare and to be there and to put on a good show and make sure that it's your club that's going to be in the drum for the next round of the championship. All right, Tommy Devan, let's put you on the spot. You pick your four, I'll pick my four. Sean Welsh can tell us which well, is tell you which is right and which who's is wrong. Who's right and who's wrong. <laughs> okay. I'll let you go first, well, Tommy. Yeah, thanks, Ali, for that. Um, St. <laughs> Brendan. <laughs> Damore McHales. Okay. Uh, I'll give you two there, St. Brendan's and Damore McHales, and I'm just trying to yeah. think of the other one. Me or uh, I, go, I, go for, I go for Glenna Maddy, and I go for Inan Arden. Jeannie, right, gone, right I, Mr. Turner. I'm going for the same four. Uh, he obviously <laughs> copied my homework, as he did for years. I know Tommy, in fairness, was a few years ahead of me and Janet, yeah. so he couldn't accuse him of that. I'm going for the same four, Sean, yeah. believe it or not. Um, whether it works out like that, the chances are there'll be some slip up or maybe yeah. a couple of them between now and Sunday night. But don't forget, the draws for the intermediate semi-finals will be at halftime in the Tomb Stars Curafin game on Sunday evening. That'll be about 20 past five. And then the draws for the championship for the quarterfinals of the senior championship, uh, they'll be at the end of the game just after six o'clock on Sunday evening. And before, so. the other two games, as we won't look at them in depth, but they're huge games in the relegation. Hetford is it against Orn Moore, Williamstown against Killer Air. In the intermediate. For those four teams, they are bigger games than the quarterfinals because that's where you don't want to be. Yeah, well, two wins and you get a chance to be safe. They'll have yeah. two more opportunities yeah. after that. But, but uh, at yeah. least you, know, you don't want to be there. 
It's amazing how things twist. Listen, loads of football action to look forward to this weekend. Uh, next week, it's back to the hurling and the club action just keeps on rolling. Thanks again to Seymour's. Thanks to Tommy for joining us. Uh, for myself and Sean, we'll chat to you next week. Over the Line Extra, your weekly Goy GAA podcast with Ollie Turner and Sean Walsh in association with Seymour's Lock Ray.